Acts chapter 20. I've, I've put a few signs around with the, uh, the theme of Acts 2020 vision. It's, a, it's something I used to hear years ago when, when I was in Bible college. Uh, people would say, we need to have Acts 2020 vision. And uh, talking about having a, an attitude toward being aware of the, the, the ministry of the Lord, of reaching people for, for Christ. And I want, to see, I want you to see the context here. And I'm going to use the word, the word perspective. Perspective. I want you to see um, where we fit in, in this, in God's plan. In Acts chapter 20, let me start reading in verse 17. Uh, this is talking about Paul. It says, From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I've been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you, and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying, that bonds and affliction abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I'm just going to stop reading there. Uh, Paul's ministry to the Christians or to the church at Ephesus was ending. And he, he called them as he was ready to leave, and he, he spoke to them and prayed with them uh, before he left. And he didn't know, of course, none of us know how long we have on this earth or how long we have in a particular place, a ministry, and, and, and so on. Uh, but he, eventually his ministry would end altogether. You know, he would end up in prison, and they, they would put him to death for his stand for the Lord. And, you know, we need to stop and, and think, uh, how long do I have? Well, we have today. You know, we don't know about tomorrow. Uh, yesterday's gone. Uh, don't, don't keep looking back. One guy said, don't look back. They might be gaining on you. Uh, you know, just keep looking forward, looking unto Jesus. Uh, but we don't know how long we have. So we need to use today. And, and Paul was, even though he was leaving that ministry, he was saying to them, now, you serve the Lord. I, I'm going on to another ministry, but you're here. You serve the Lord where you are and how you are. Uh, you know, uh, you don't know how long your ministry will be. Um, not everybody has a ministry. Uh, as Christians, we, we should. Now, oftentimes, churches have the, the theme, every saint, a servant, every member, a minister. I, I think that's a good attitude to have, that we're all, we're all part of it. Uh, you know, some people never start a ministry. Uh, some people start and give up. And, you know, there's all different ways that we approach it. But we need to realize God decides how long we have. Use your time wisely. Use your time wisely. You know, don't keep saying, well, someday I'll do this or that. Um, you know, like he says in, in James, uh, life is like a vapor. Uh, we just don't know. In Colossians, he, he says, he's talking to a guy named Archippus, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. You know, God gives you a ministry, just do your best to, uh, to fulfill it. Uh, Paul wanted to be able to finish with joy. Uh, did you notice that there in, in verse 24? Uh, he said, I don't count my life dear to myself. Uh, I'm not in this for selfish things. He says, I want to finish my course with joy. And that should be our goal, to finish strong, uh, to finish in the Lord. And he was able to say later on in 1 Timothy, and we'll, we'll read it later, I've, I've finished my course, I've fought the faith. Uh, you know, he, was, he was faithful to the Lord. You might say, well, pastor, you're a minister, but I'm not in the ministry. Well, listen, every Christian is in the ministry. When God said, go ye, he wasn't just talking to the pastors, all right? <laughs> go ye into all the world. The ye is you. And uh, we're all ministers. We all serve the Lord. God not only has called you when he says go, but he's gifted you. God has given you his Holy Spirit. He's given you spiritual gifts. He's equipped you in uh, where is it where he, he says he's given us all things to pertain unto life and godliness? We have what we need uh, to serve the Lord. 
And this morning, I want to show you from this passage four perspectives of your ministry. Each one of these are important. The first is your perspective toward the Lord. How do you fit your ministry? How does it fit in your relationship to the Lord? Well, verse 19, I think he hits it right on the head. Serving the Lord. Your perspective to the, toward the Lord is you're a servant. Now, sometimes we get this backwards. I talk to people all the time who, who say something like, well, I told God what I wanted and he didn't do it. I don't, that's, that's not right. He didn't do what I told him. You heard it. Now, they put it in better ways than that. And they have the attitude that God is their servant. Listen, folks, that's backwards. God's not our servant. We're his servant. We're supposed to do what he says. Now, he says, call unto me and ask and, you know, all those things. But something I learned a long time ago, and it was hard teaching this to my kids, no is an answer. <laughs> right. You know, kids hate it when you say, well, let's, we'll see or maybe, or, you know. But when you say no, that's an answer. And it, it's no huge whining about it. Uh, sometimes God says, says no. We need to have a perspective toward the Lord that we're, we're servants. That was, that was Paul's view. He didn't treat God like a genie. You know, a lot of people do. They, they, they bring God out. You know, they never pay any attention to him until they want something. And, and then they pray and, oh, you know, it's like rubbing the magic lantern, you know. And, and you know, God's got to do what they want. No, he doesn't. You, you've got it wrong. Your perspective toward God's needs to be serving the Lord. Now, this is so important. Uh, it, if this is not right, none of the other perspectives will be right. Towards people, towards your family, towards anything. If you don't see yourself as a servant of the Lord, if you don't see the Lord high and lifted up, you won't see anything in a, in a proper view. Yeah, when we're asking for Acts 20, 20 vision, we want, first of all, to have a right view of God. That's going to be so important uh, for our lives. You know, Paul had things happen to him that we, we won't have happen. And he was on a ship, and an angel came and told him what was going to happen next. And uh, he's telling about it, and he said, There stood by me that night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. He said, I, I belong to God, and I serve God. That was his attitude. That was his view of his relationship to God. Uh, we've talked, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I preached about worshiping. This is very much the same. Worship encompasses everything. Everything we do should be done to worship God. Well, everything we do should be done to serve the Lord. Uh, in uh, Ephesians, he, he talks to servants. Now, that's just talking about when you do something for somebody else. Um, and, and he says in Ephesians chapter 6 and, and verse 5, Be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. So whatever we do, we should say, I'm doing this because I'm a servant of the Lord. Or it could be, I'm not going to do this because I'm a servant of the Lord. If you're going to make a decision, it needs to be done in your perspective to your God. Uh, we should be looking for God's approval. In 2 Timothy, he, sa he says, study to show thyself approved unto God. You know, so often we worry about what people think. Yeah, you've said it to somebody. Oh, what will people think? <laughs> well, people will think what they're going to think. Sometimes they'll tell you, sometimes they won't. But it's important what God thinks. That's the most important thing. Paul's view was that he was God's servant. Let me ask you this morning, and I don't want a, an answer out loud, but who do you serve? In uh, Galatians chapter 1 and, and verse 10, he makes this point. When I say he, I mean God. He says, do I now persuade men or God? Do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. That's pretty plain, isn't it? He said, if your goal is to please people, you're not the servant of Christ. You have a wrong view of life if you're just living to please people. Now, some of, some of us, let's see, let me put that a different way. Some people are born, we're born with different personalities. Some people are, are more prone to want to please people than others. Now, there's some people, they're born with a personality, they could care less what anybody thinks, you know. Uh, but there's others who, they, you know, they just, they're born, they come out of the womb like that. They want to please everybody. And, and we need to be careful that we don't just go by our natural inclinations. 
that we go by supernatural inclinations. Now, God can use that in you. That's why he made you that way. If you're a people pleaser naturally, God will use that if you'll submit it to him. But if not, it'll separate you from him. It'll cause you to be out of relationship with God, out of a right relationship. Uh, we need to realize we're servants of God. And not only who we are, but how. Uh, Paul said he served there in Acts chapter 20 with humility of mind. But we live in an age where humility is considered a bad thing. Pride, everything's about pride. Oh, I'm so proud of this and I'm so proud of that. Uh, God doesn't commend pride. Uh, in Galatians chapter 6 and, and verse 3, he says, If a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Folks, we have, uh, we have every reason to be humble. <laughs> we need to realize that. We have every reason to be humble. Uh, in uh, James, the, the Bible tells us that God will bless humility. In, in fact, he, he relates it to pride. James chapter 4 and, and verse 6. I won't find that in Peter. He giveth more grace. He saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Man, God resists the proud. And let me tell you something. If God resists you, you're going to be resisted. <laughs> you're going to have trouble. Have you ever seen somebody where they're trying to do something and somebody's holding them back, you know, just you know, like maybe a little kid, they're, they're holding them back? Well, listen, uh, that's what's going to happen if you live for pride. Things just aren't going to work the way you, you think they should. God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Later on, uh, he says in, in James chapter 4, verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Instead of resisting you, he'll be giving you a boost. But with our little kids in the home now, you know, we're doing that a lot. <laughs> giving them a boost. Sometimes resisting them. Uh, and you really see what, what God is talking about here. You don't want God to resist you. You want God to help you. I hope. And you need to have a right perspective toward God. We're his servants. We need to serve with humility. Now, you... you you may not like this next point, but it's in the Bible, so you, you need to believe it. We also need to serve with suffering. Did you see that there in, in verse 19? Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations. So that temptations is basically trials because he says, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. There were people who followed Paul around trying to either kill him or arrest him or cause a riot I mean, can you imagine? You, know, you come around the corner, here's a bunch of people rioting because you've come around the corner. <laughs> Whoa, that was Paul's life. And uh, you know, he knew that to serve the Lord, it was going to be tough. And for us, the same is going to be true. He says in Timothy, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you have a right perspective of God, just count on it. There'll be times when it's, it's going to be tough. But don't give up just because it hurts. Uh, don't coddle yourself. It, you know, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21, the Bible says Jesus suffered. Now, we know that. But it says there, Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. He not only did it for us, he did it to show us. You can do this. You can follow me. Uh, don't give up. Yeah, he, Paul talks there about tears and temptations. Tears are basically, the, that's what comes from the inside. You know, there, there's all kinds of things inside us, aren't there? Sometimes things come out and you think, ooh, where'd that come from? <laughs> well, it came from in, in you. Okay? It came from in me. Uh, and tears come. Sometimes things are just, man, things are tough sometimes. And uh, the Bible says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. So there's a promise there. But also there's things that come from the outside temptations and trials. There, there's tough times that uh, they didn't come from in you. They came from, they came at you. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to, well, you, you, you just need to deal with them. There in um, ch chapter 20, Acts 20, verse 29, is this, uh, I know this, that after my departing shall grievous world, wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. He said, there's, there's going to come some trouble. Uh, sometimes it'll come wh when, you, when and where you least expect it. Probably many of you are familiar with the song, It Will Be Worth It All. 
You ever sung that song? It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. You know what? That's true. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. But the question we need to ask is, do I really mean it? <laughs> uh, am I willing to suffer because I have a right attitude towards God? I'm his servant. If he calls on me to be his footstool, I'll be his footstool. Yeah, we love it when God glory, you know, gives us glory. Uh, but uh, you find out whether you're really a servant when somebody treats you like a servant. Uh, God says our attitude toward him is we need to be servants of the Lord. We need to have a right view of our relationship with God. We also need to have a right view of our relationship to our church and to the lost. Uh, that's what verses 20 and 21 are about. Now, let, let me read them again. Acts 20, verse 20. He's talking about the trouble and the lying in wait of the Jews. It says, How I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now understand this. When Paul went to Ephesus, there weren't any Christians there. He didn't go to Fellowship Baptist Church of Ephesus. He went in and there was nobody. And so he began to preach in the, in the square. He began to talk to people in their houses, you know, he went around preaching the gospel, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our same message today. It has a negative, it has a positive. They both are one thing. And as he went, man, he went with, with love in his heart toward the Lord, you know, a right attitude toward God, doing it because he's a servant of God, but also because he wanted to reach those people for Christ. And then as they were reached, to be an example to them of what a believer is. Let's deal with that one, that one first, your perspective toward your church. I find people have a lot of odd perspectives uh, toward their church. I've talked to more than one person now who has said to me, uh, you know, I say, well, what church do you go to? Oh, I go to three or four churches. And they say it proudly. And I think, what? I haven't said it to them yet. Next time I probably will. What a shame. That's awful. That would be like saying I have three or four wives. You know what I mean? You know? It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, we need to have a right perspective toward our church. It needs to be important to us. In um, Timothy, he's speaking to a young man. He said, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You know, when we come to church, we often look for what the church can do for us. Oh, those people, they need to change. Oh, they need to do. No, when you go to church, you need to look for what you can do for the body of Christ. Kennedy said to Americans many years ago, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Well, the same is, is true for Christians. Don't just go into this in a selfish way. Look for what you can do. Look to be an example of the believers. That's, that's the attitude that we need to have. That's the perspective we need to have. Am I an example? Would someone be able to be like me and be like Jesus? Uh, he, he said to them in verse 20, I've kept back nothing that was profitable to you. In verse 19, he said, I'm serving the Lord. Uh, in 2 Timothy 3.16, he says, all, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. It's all profitable. And, and as he shared God's word with them, first of all, to get them saved, then as Christians to see them grow, uh, he was concerned that he had the right perspective towards those lost people and then towards those Christian people. Give God the profitable part of your life. Yeah, I find oftentimes people give God their leftovers. Oh, can you come and help us? Oh, I don't have time. I'm busy this. I'm, and I know, I'm, I'm not saying nobody's busy. But we need to be careful what we do with, with what God has given to us. Have a godly perspective toward your church. And as well, have a godly perspective toward the lost. In verse 21, it's basically the word evangelism. I'm trying to have a word with each one of these. The, the first one, our perspective toward God is servant. Our perspective toward our church is example. And our perspective toward the lost is evangelism. Uh, we need to understand, uh, people without Christ are going to hell. Uh, Jesus, this is what Jesus said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And he's talking about an incident that, that had happened. You know, we have things happen in our world, don't we? where, you know, 100 people die, a plane crashes, or, you know, a few years ago, that, that 
what was it called, the, the water that spread all over and thousands and thousands of people died. He was talking about an incident like that and he said to them, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. We're all going to die. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to our friends and to our neighbors? Now, we can, we can ignore them or we can be a servant of the Lord and we can try to reach them. And I'll warn you, our message is, first of all, negative. <laughs> the reason they need to be saved is because they're lost. They're on their way to hell. It's the word repent. Now, Paul's attitude was that reaching the lost was a necessity. Now, he said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and uh, verse 16 when he said, Though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. What's he, what he's saying there is, if I don't preach the gospel, I'm a dirty dog. It's a necessity. It's something that, that God says uh, is our job to do. In Romans chapter 1, he, he talks about the debt that we have. I'm debtor both to the Greeks and, uh, how does he put that there? You probably know it. The Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. You know, Jesus has said, to whom much is given, much shall be required. Well, we've been given the gospel. Listen, don't keep it to yourself. It, it's the light of the Lord. And the thing about God's light is you can give as much away as you can, and you'll never lose any yourself. It, it's just an unending source, the light of God. It's a, it's a necessity. It's a debt. It's a commitment. Romans 1.15, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Don't just think of this as something that maybe you'll do someday if it could possibly come up. Plan on it and be ready uh, to share the gospel. Have a godly perspective toward the lost. Now, I've got to say, our message is not an easy one. Now, faith is easy. You know, Jesus is lovely. Uh, I have no problem uh, loving the Lord and, you know, presenting that to the Lord. Uh, presenting the Lord to people. But the problem is, we don't just preach the positive side. We've also got to preach the negative side. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to me, that's two sides of the same coin. You can't have repentance without faith, and you can't have faith without repentance. And I think the reason a lot of times people play church is because they've tried to trust the Lord without ever repenting. They've never really dealt with their sin. And uh, the Bible says we, we're, all si we're all sinners. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, we need to come to God in repentance and faith. He, he said in Acts 17 that God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. You know, God is faithful. He'll not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Now, if you apply that to lost people, uh, Jesus is the way of escape. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the verse I, sh I should know, he says he's not slack as uh, some people count slackness. You know, people are, the reason people don't get saved is not because God is careless, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come, what? To repentance. To come to God, we have to come, first of all, to repentance. And then we have to come, as well, in faith. When, when Peter preached at Pentecost, people's hearts were really moved. They, they were just really touched by the, the message, and they cried out to him. Uh, I've said this before. I've never had this happen in, when I've been preaching. You know, somebody, what should I do? Well, that's what they said. What should we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of, of Jesus Christ. And what he was talking about is exactly what he's talking about it later on. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Your perspective toward the lost is going to be so important. Uh, have a godly perspective toward the lost. Uh, our job is to evangelize. And then finally, your perspective toward yourself. Did you notice there in Acts chapter 20, Paul began to talk about his situation. In verses 22, he said, I'm, I'm going up to Jerusalem. And he said, everywhere I go, people say, God has told us if you go to Jerusalem, you're going to really have a hard time. <laughs> you're going to really be in trouble. 
Uh, that's what he's, that's the modern interpretation there. Uh, the things that, sh not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me or await me. For me to go there, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have trouble. Well, here was his response, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. Now, he didn't say, oh, I'm going to have trouble. Oh, I won't go there. <laughs> no, he was going there because that was God's will for his life. That's where God had told him to go. So that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I've received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I'm going there to do what God's told me to do. And if it brings trouble, so be it. He said, I don't count my life dear unto myself. Can I just say this? It will cost you to serve the Lord. And I mentioned it earlier. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. But as you're going through it, it's going to cost you. And you're going to be very aware of that. You're going to be aware of the cost. We're going through some things uh, right now where you know, uh, we're, we're paying a price because we're serving the Lord. Just be real honest with you. Uh, there's things that we'd love to have different, but they're not. And we don't hold our lives dear. We don't say, oh, well, everybody else has got that. I want that. No, we say, well, what, is the, what does the Lord want me to do? You know, Paul sacrificed so much. He said, I could have carried a, a wife around with me. Yeah. He could have, he, he, I'm sure he'd love to have had a good marriage and, you know, all those things. But he said, no, that wasn't God's plan for my life. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that we, we sometimes sacrifice because God says, no, that's, that's not my purpose for you. you know, it'll, it makes sense that if, it's, if we're going to serve the Lord, it's going to cost us because it costs to love anybody. If you have any love relationship in life, uh, parents, Man, does it cost you to love your kids? Of course it does. Man, there's heartaches. There's, there's things you never imagined before you have kids. And the only reason it affects you is because you love them. Uh, any relationship of love is going to cost you. Well, of course it's going to cost us to love God. The question is, do you love him? Paul was able to say, for, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. He didn't hold his life dear. Uh, later on in that same passage, uh, let me just find it here, Philippians 1, verse 29, he said, Unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. The word that, of perspective I would put with self is sacrifice. We need to be willing to sacrifice. As individuals, uh, we're, we're not in this for personal gain. When you come to the Lord, you're in it for the Lord. Do you love him? Paul was able to say, neither count I my life dear unto myself. You know, many times you, you might, well, sometimes you might think about dying for the Lord. It, it could happen. There's people all over the world right now uh, who die for the Lord. And, you know, I would hope that I would be brave and godly and, you know, whatever it, it would take. But, you know, there's probably, hopefully, very few of us that God will ask to die for him. But he asks every one of us to live for him. It's no, it's no good sacrificing something you don't have. It's no good sacrificing something that you're not faced with. What, what you need to give to the Lord is what you're faced with right now. The situation you have. I have a situation. You have a situation. We, we all do. And that's where we are in our relationship to God. Are we willing to love him more than self? That's really what it comes down to. Am I the servant of the Lord? Am I holding my life dear or am I holding my God dear? Will you live for him? Do you love him? Paul said, I want to finish my course with joy. He didn't just want to finish. <laughs> you know, sometimes I feel like that. Oh, let's get this over with, you know, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, he said, I don't just want to finish. I want to finish with joy. I want to be able to hear God's well done, good and, and faithful servant. In uh, 2 Timothy, he, he talks about uh, ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Th this was evidently the last letter he wrote, 2 Timothy. And at some point after he'd written it, they took him out and cut his head off. Man, 
Uh, I guess it would be a good quick way to go. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but he was able to say, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Uh, finish your course with joy. Don't quit. Don't coddle yourself. Uh, don't give yourself so much sympathy. <laughs> uh, be willing to, to sacrifice for the Lord. Save your sympathy for others, folks. Uh, expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God, as one of the missionaries said. A songwriter wrote, Let me see this world, dear Lord, as though I were looking through your eyes. A world of men who don't want you, Lord, yet a world for which you died. And what a blessing to know that God sees us through eyes of love. Every one of us. God so loved the world that he gave. The attitude I'm presenting to you for us is exactly what God did for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What's your perspective? We've looked at a lot of things this morning, maybe too many. Uh, toward God, do you see yourself as a servant of the Lord? What's your perspective toward his body, the church? Are you willing to be an example, to be what a, a believer should be? What's your perspective toward the lost? Do you have a heart for souls and willing to be uh, reaching out to them? What's your attitude toward yourself? Are you willing to not hold your life dear and to sacrifice uh, in order to love the Lord? You know, the first question that has to be answered is, are you saved? Do you know Christ is your Savior? If you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? Well, if you are saved, are you willing to live Acts 20, verses 20 and 21? Let's narrow it down to those two verses. We'll start with those two verses and work out from there. Uh, we need to be willing to be servants of the Lord and to, to share the gospel and to be faithful in our church and to be, have an attitude of, of humility and service. Are you saved? Are you willing? Uh, God can help us. Uh, let's go to him in, in prayer this morning. Father, thank you so much. Thank you that you loved us. Lord, that you see us as we are. And yet you, you love us. You made a way for us to be saved. Father, you gave your only son. Thank you. Lord, help us to look past the things of life that would hinder us. And Lord, help us to live our lives in a profitable way. Lord, I pray. I, I know our folks are going through tough times and difficult situations. Help them to see that you can use it for good. Lord, help us to, to honor you. Help us to reach the lost. Father, so many folks you've put in our path. Help us not to fail in sharing the gospel with them. Lord, help us to be what you would, you would have us to be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.